and a bit after that showdown. Have you got a handle on what it's taken out of the players and how you're going to handle it this week to get them ready for Carl? Yeah, oh, look, it was a um, it was a difficult week in a way last week. You know, to get back Monday to be in quarantine uh, till uh, Wednesday night. Um, trained for the first session on Thursday, but we didn't have a, a, a terrific week, and it certainly came out in both our games uh, on Saturday. So, you know, I think the great thing is the guys showed some really good resilience to, to work through the second half and, and fight their way back into the game and, and get the result. This week, how do you handle preparing them? Uh, oh, a game that would take a lot out of players. Yeah, I, I think it's a, um, you know, it, it's great that they res responded. You know, we'd, we'd expect a, a better training uh, week on the track to be able to train properly for a couple of sessions and, you know, that'll give us a better chance to prepare knowing what faces us moving forward in the next two weeks. The movement into attack and then the productivity on the scoreboard falls into your division. How, mm -hmm. how have you assessed it and how do you correct it? Oh, I, th I think we've been going okay. I think the weekend was, um, well, how can I put it politely? Um, it wasn't it wasn't our finest work, um, and and that was that was across the board, you know. And there was a few guys that are, you know, working their way back through injury uh, with Robbie and uh, and Orazio, um, and you know, Charlie probably had about you know four weeks where I was, I was expecting that performance at some stage in the last four weeks, and he kept playing well, working through, you know, being quite sore, and and you know he looked sore. Um, in the game on the weekend and you know, maybe a few too many parts that weren't quite working close enough to full capacity on uh, Saturday night. You got a read on Stephen Motlop yet? Uh, well Motlop was moving well last week so you know he'll, he'll train to, to give himself the best chance to play this week. I guess it's that age-old thing Nathan, competition for spots, it seems like you're coming full strength at the right time of the year. Yeah we're well, certainly getting all the, the um, you know, probably most of the main players back on the field, it's more about getting them into the, you know the form that gives them the best chance to, to play well when it comes to finals. So you know some of the guys have had longish layoffs. Uh, you know Moss is missing a month. He'll be missing a month now by the time he returns. Um, so w whether we move him through the SNFL or bring him straight back into the AFL, we'll wait till later in the week to work that out. Do you become accustomed of knowing who your opponent is, but not knowing when you're playing them and where you're playing them? Uh, well, it's certainly uh, been the way the lay of the land this year. Um, uh, you know, we, we know we've got Carlton this week. We, we think we're playing some stage Saturday, um, so you know we'll uh, we'll find out when the when the draw gets released. Can you tell us the fallout from the showdown with Alia and Alia? How do you handle it here in terms of this? What do the players do around Alia, or what else do you do around that whole issue? Oh, I mean, we'll we'll get around and support him. I think uh, you know at different stages, the lots of people make foolish decisions to make comments and more than foolish decisions they make an idiot of themselves um, and some do it because they're an idiot and others do it because um, we give them the airtime uh, and they, they get recognised as, as, as making a headline so you know it's uh, you know, extremely disappointing but uh, you know Lee's a, a fantastic footballer he's, he's been a terrific person for our footy club you know we love him you can't not like a Lear. Um so you know we will uh, We'll keep supporting him, we'll keep uh, loving the high quality performances that he's been producing for us all season. Where do you draw that line? I know you're not the one in charge of putting out statements away from decisions like that, but where do you draw that line with obviously you have an opinion on it, calling out the bloke that has you know, 10,000 followers or whatever, or calling out the bloke that has one follower and he's just created it purely to do this? Where do you, where do you stand on that? Ah, uh, it, it's all. Um, well, it's all poor either way, whether you've got 10,000 followers or whether you've just created an account to um, heckle someone because you think it'll, be, it'll get a rise and it'll get some, some airplay. And it, and it happens right across the AFL. And you know, as much as it's the racism thing this week, it's, it's players copping heat because they didn't kick the extra goal. So if someone completes a, a multi in, their, in some, someone's stupid multi on the weekend or it's random abuse that anyone that's attached to a footy club can occasionally cop and that we all um, occasionally uh, get and it's just because you know people are, uh, some people are looking for a response other people well they're just dickheads. Has it been through a lot of this in his career? Uh, like close up you've called it out regularly? Yeah I couldn't tell you and, and, it's, and it's you know we'd, I'm in a uh, 
I'm the majority of the population. You know, I'm, I'm white and I'm brought up amongst um, <coughs> the majority of uh, white mates. You know, I've got plenty of, I've got other friends across all different ethnicities, um, but I don't know the, the experience that it is, um, or nor could I, you know, fully comprehend what he's lived through uh, in his life. But um, you know, we love having him in the footy club, and, and um, you know, we, we embrace diversity as a club. Is he okay? Have you, have you spoken? To him? I haven't spoken to him yet. No. Nathan, you all the wave of a high injury count. You get 15 wins. You're in the top four. First time since 2007, 15 wins. So, prove your squad mentality. What else do you gain out of it? That all that, you know, just being able to win while you didn't have your best troops available. Oh uh, well, we gain a great crack at the top four. Um, you know, we're in we're in a great shape, and you see what the weekends provided across the competition. It's like there's. Um, whether it be Geelong losing to GWS or under strength, Western Bulldogs uh, losing and, and copying an injury or two uh, out of the game, Sydney who've been in great form, you know, probably for them it feels like they've been on the road since 1975, like they've been away from home for a long time. Um, you know, all teams are going through their, their battles and if you can get the wins up while you're doing it, um, it keeps pushing you closer towards the top of the ladder and you know, we've got a, a great opportunity this week to cement a place in the top four. You're talking about uh, Stevie maybe coming back and the boys that have come back recently, but perhaps they need a bit of time to get to full fitness. Do you think that it's not was to play this week? Are there any of those boys, whether it's a Butters or a Rosie or whatever, who are fit enough to now play more in midfield and accommodate everyone? Yeah, I think we've got enough midfield spread. I think you know Zach's been getting better. His his numbers were down a little bit running wise on the weekend, but he's he's shown some good improvement. I think Connor is growing again and, and looking like you know the footballer that he was in 2019 and you know I'm really liking what I'm seeing um, from Connor so you know I, I think the great thing is we've got some depth and, and we've got some uh, we've got enough good people in our club where if we can keep building our form and, and build the form individually as well then you know we can give ourselves a great chance to compete in September.